coined by Francis Crick, the central dogma of molecular biology states that biological information flows in only one direction, from DNA to RNA to proteins. In order to undergo the first step in the central dogma, the DNA must become messenger RNA, or mRNA. In order for that to happen, a Tata binding protein will attach to the Tata box. So here's the DNA and the Tata box, which is located on the core promoter. In some cases, the cat box will be present, which is comprised of the DNA sequence GGC. C A A T C T and about a hundred nucleotides down from the Tata -ta box. So now the Tata -ta binding proteins come in and attach to the Tata -ta box, bringing in TF2D, which is this complex. As this happens, basal factors such as TF2A, TF2C, and TF2D gradually attach to the Tata -ta binding protein, forming a chain which attract to and hold in RNA polymerase II or RNAP2. Inside of TF2D are coactivators, which is where the activator will come in and attach to and grab enhancers on the DNA upstream from the promoter site, folding it into the initiation complex, which serve to speed up the transcription of mRNA. When the cat box is present, an activator will attach to it, speeding up mRNA synthesis even further. However, if on the strand of the DNA a repressor binds to a silencer, here's a silencer, and here's a repressor, then what happens is that the adjacent enhancer's shape gets changed so that the activators cannot attach and synthesis is either slowed or non-existent. Now that this structure is complete, ATP gets added to the complex to supply energy, then it gets changed to ADP. Now, the RNAP2 gets released. Here's the RNAP2. What it does is unzip the double helix, creating an open complex. Then the RNAP2 moves down the helix as ribonucleotide triphosphates are added in the 5 to 3 prime direction. These include the bases cytosine, guanine, adenine, and uracil. During this time, the mRNA synthesized from RNAP2 goes through 5 prime capping when the 5 prime M gets capped with a 7 methylguanosine, protecting it from a nuclease attack once the mRNA enters the cytoplasm. Now, as RNAP2 approaches the end of the transcription unit at the point where a termination code is, TF2D unbinds from DNA and RNAP2 and releases the unmature mRNA sequence. After termination, the 3 prime end gets cleaved off and then a sequence of adenine gets added to form a poly A tail. And then proteins get added to the poly A tail to protect it from being degraded. Now what happens next is splicing. And then the mRNA can be mature. On the mRNA, there are segments called introns and exons. The exons are red and the introns are blue. The exons are what stays in splicing. These hold traits that are expressed while introns, which get spliced off, have traits that aren't expressed. So in comes the spliceosomes, which cut an intron and then loop the mRNA, cut it, and then the exons get stitched back together. And now you have a mature mRNA strand, ready to move out of the nucleus through the nuclear membrane or nuclear pores. Now that the mRNA has moved to the cytoplasm, the next step can begin. Translation. Here's the mature mRNA strand. And here's the tRNA strand, most likely named for its T-shape. At the bottom is the anticodon arm, named because it has the base pairs for the codon of mRNA it attaches to. Here is the start codon for tRNA, AUG, in which tRNA carries the anticodon, UAC. Something that is important to know is that the anticodons of some tRNA molecules can bind to two or more different codons. This is because there is far many less tRNA molecules than there are codons for amino acids. Therefore, in some cases, the 5' prime position, also known as the wobble position, could move around to allow pairing with the different bases. For example, 
The tRNA molecule carrying the anticodon AAG could match with the codon UUC or UUU on mRNA. This is also known as the wobble hypothesis. Here is the D-arm, named because it contains dihydrouridine bases, which are unusual nucleotides found only in tRNA. Here is the TC arm, named for its sequence of thymines, pseudodorines, and cytosines. Here is the 3' end, characterized with an amino acid, bonded to it with an ester bond, which is distinguished by the codon from mRNA, in this case, methionine. The amino acid is bonded with the energy ATP and amino acyl tRNA synthesase. Once bonded, the molecule becomes a charged tRNA molecule. The 3' side is also known as the acceptor arm. Adjacent to the 3' end is the 5' end, which completes the T formation. So for translation to happen, the tRNA molecule needs to join to the mRNA along with a ribosome. In eukaryotic cells, ribosomes are abundant. The smaller subunit of the ribosome joins to the mRNA strand. Then the bigger subunit comes. The ribosome, once together, has three parts to it, the E site, the P site, and the A site. Now the tRNA comes into the P site. A second tRNA molecule enters the A site. The amino acid on the tRNA molecule in the P site, methionine, gets transferred to the A site amino acid with the help of peptyl transferase, forming a peptide bond between the two amino acids. The first tRNA exits as the ribosome slides towards the 3' end of the mRNA into the E site and then the one that was once in the A site gets moved to the P site as a new tRNA molecule enters into the A site. The new amino acid on the tRNA molecule in the P site gets transferred to the new amino acid in the A site with the help of the peptyl transferase forming yet another peptide bond and the process continues like this forming a polypeptide chain until a stop codon is reached. Once a stop codon is in the P site, a release factor enters the A site and translation is terminated. During termination, the ribosome comes apart and the newly synthesized protein is released, ending the process of the central dogma.